Right, this is a video uh, just to do a test using this stuff which I've just got. Um, I've just found out about this and basically what it is is it's an expanding polyurethane foam which I'm hoping will be ideal for doing some stop motion uh, models. So it's kind of like a substitute for using foam latex which involves baking and obviously you have to have a mixer to mix up the foam uh, so that's to be honest it's not ideal having to buy another oven to bake it in and a mixer as well so I found this stuff and I've used polycraft stuff before and I do like their, I like their uh, resin as well it's quite uh, quite good and it's affordable too so I bought the uh, 500 gram or the 750 gram kit just to try it out and it was only about 20 22 pound I think it was which is cheap for these type of materials um, so this will be interesting to see how it uh, how it goes I've got to test it out, I've got this. This is a uh, from an old college project. Uh, weighs an absolute ton. This is an old mould that I had. <coughs> I think you might be able to see it. But that is an old Cyclops mould that I made. You know the the Ray Harry House and Cyclops. I try to make a my own version of it, it does need a bit of a clean but because I've always wanted to at the time I made this model this was my college final project so I obviously wanted it to look good and stuff but to be honest at the end of it I wasn't satisfied with the result I ended up having to just basically pour latex into this and make a skin, a latex skin and then I had to build the model up with foam and try and make it match the the, the bulk of the actual sculpture. Uh, so in the end it was kind of ill-fitting, it didn't really, the skin didn't fit over the, the foam too well. So I'm hoping with this, if I put this expanding foam in, it will just fill everything. And I'll need to just look into how, how many, you know, times how, how big it expands uh, just before I do it but I'm using this as a test anyway because I've not had this mould out in a while it's filled with bits of latex and still got bits of plastic in it from the original sculpture so that's going to take a wee bit of cleaning um, but I'm hoping that the end result can look will look pretty good um, I'm hoping it captures detail and stuff. Uh, I think I might just go ahead and have, I had this, this was actually, this armature's about, I don't know how many, but three years old now. And it was originally meant to go in the, geez, it was originally meant to go in the final model, but for some weird reason I didn't use it. So I'm gonna use it this time. And it's not the best armature, um, I don't intend to use this for animation, this is literally just a, check, a test to see how well the foam handles with uh, an armature in it. But it'll be interesting to see how it, um, how it performs. Uh, I've bought the soft viscosi viscosity, I think they say, Vis viscosity, I can't even say it, because uh, you could get soft, medium and hard, so I actually originally bought medium and I thought, I thought I was speaking to someone in the effects industry and they said no, it definitely gets soft, uh, the soft version because, so luckily I had time to cancel the order and change it, so I've got the soft uh, viscosity now and we'll give it a go, so hopefully I can do a cool time-lapse video of it expanding or no, I won't be able to because it'll be in the mould but anyway, I'll, I'll give it a go so, wish me luck 
and uh, we'll carry on. Okay, so as I mentioned in the previous uh, section, I was going to put it straight into the mould, but I thought, play it safe, do a wee test first just to see what it's like. So I did, and I used half the mixing ratio that it said. So this is with part A, it would have been what is the mixing ratio again? So part A would have been 50 and part B would have been 25 so that's 75 you know that that would be you know the 75 mark now it's literally just expanded so quickly and I don't know it says the table times 10 minutes so I'm not sure it's been 10 minutes yet but I'm just gonna play it safe and leave it Probably about 20 minutes just to be on the safe side. This is the result. So, as you can see, started off there. Uh, yeah, that was the level it was at. So you can see how much it's expanded. Um, so that's, I mean, it has got a bit of a, a curve to the top, but that's just over 300, that's about 320. No, 310 is that. So that's quite a bit, it's expanded. I'm just looking at it at the sides here and I can see a lot of air bubbles. And I don't know how that might... I don't know about that. See, it's getting a lot more tacky now. So I might just leave it a bit more, just see how it's gonna go. But yeah, that's, that is actually quite fascinating to see how much that's risen. But I've made a time lapse so you will see it um, rising. But yeah, so when I'll, our next video when I take it out, I'll we'll just see what it's like. Um, so yeah. Right, this is the results of that test. As well as it seemed to be expanding, um, I've left it for over 10 minutes and the top seems fine That's quite a good consistency, but this I'm kind of worried about This is very Flaky It's actually got a bit better now It's not falling about apart as much, but It is, it is a very soft foam, but I think, like there you go it's a huge chunk it's falling out there, but I, I think it's... My mixing ratio might have been a little bit off, and I might not have mixed it as well as I should have. But by the time I was like mixing it, it was already starting to kind of like cure, so I just assumed that that was it, you know. So I think I'm actually just going to have to try it in this. I mean, it's not... It sh shouldn't really ruin the mould. Um, and also it might help clean it out a bit more but I'm going to do it with the armature in anyway just to see how it goes Right, okay, I've just went ahead and I've put some of this foam into the Cyclops mould that I made and I'd used 300 to 150 ratio and I did it in separate cups this time so made sure that I definitely had the right amount so I'm just hoping, this has been sitting for about 2 minutes now so I'm going to give this a good amount of time, I've got a heater next to it so it's not going to be too cold in here um, and you can already see this is the excess which looks absolutely horrid but I think I'll give it a bit more time and I'm hoping that it just doesn't turn out. This is actually a lot of time to cure now. And it although it's still flaky, I 
think if I had left it in the cup, it would have, I mean, that's pretty solid and that's just literally all fell on it. So that's kind of useless, but it's promising because the top of it was pretty solid. So I think the only reason why that started to flake was because I took it out too early out of the cup. So that may explain it, I don't know. But uh, as you can see, this is already expanding inside. What I'm worried about is hopefully air can get in there. I'm pretty sure it'll be able to get up at this end, but if it doesn't, that might mean it might not set properly, but you know what, this is, um, you know, this is experimental, so we'll see, and it's, the heater's next to it, so hopefully some heat can escape in there and maybe help it a bit. So I'm just going to leave this, I'm going to say I'm actually going to leave this for about a couple of hours now and go and get other stuff done and forget about it and then I'll surprise myself later and go, oh, I've got a mould to, I've got something to demold. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's a little sneak peek at what else I'm making by the way. It's another Cyclops, but uh, I was hoping to mould this and do what I'm doing here, but I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll test it out with this mould. Um, and we'll see how it goes. So um yeah hopefully the next video will be the the big reveal. Um and we'll see how it handles with the I mean in all fair and as a kinda a, a bonus I've got this wire skeleton in it so it might I don't know it might help support something at least it might have it give it something to grab on it and you know hold itself onto but I don't know how really don't know I'm new to this stuff I didn't even know it existed till a couple of days ago so we'll see um, anyway stay tuned and uh, I'll be back we'll see how this goes okay so I've separated the mold and as you can see it's not turned out too good <laughs> but it's something, it's, it's actually, I thought it was going to be a lot worse, but yeah, the reason I think it's not going to plan is because there's not any air getting into the mould, because this is still a bit, um, it's not completely dry, so I might just leave this to just get the air to it, and it might dry out, and I might be able to take it out. Uh, could possibly put a bit more in there and just try and fill that void, but I don't know how that's gonna how that is gonna work. But as you can see, it's like captured no detail at all from this. So at least it's kind of got a bit of a form, but oh well. We we'll need to see how this can be fixed for next time. So I might need to alter this mold and put more like channels in it for the excess to escape from. Um, surprised it didn't get in any of the face, but anyway, practice makes no, oh no, not practice makes perfect. Uh, I don't know what the saying is. Learn from your mistakes. So there we go. <laughs> so since the Cyclops test didn't go as planned, I've decided to try it again, but this time a smaller mold. This is the that dinosaur one I made last year. Um, and the results of that were this guy, this was the finished model and it's been in a lot of the tests that I've made but the only problem with this is, is 
you know, as good as it looks, it actually does came out a lot better than I thought. This is a basically a built up model and I was hoping to do one that was you know much more faithful to the, the sculpt because this skin for the head was made from this mould but the, the problem with that is because the latex is quite flimsy it can warp and basically what it means is you've got to make your the the kind of bulk of the head has to be made up from foam so I had to try and shape the foam to the shape of this so that the skin would fit over it you know almost perfectly but that was really difficult and it has kind of worked it a bit especially in the, the middle of the head you know so I'm hoping that with this experiment what I can do is have the latex outer skin so it captures all that nice the detail in it and then fill it with this expanding foam so I'm doing this quick little test just now with latex in the mould but I've used before I put this latex in I dusted it with talcum powder just to, to hopefully it means that it will peel out the mould easily when it's set so this is about two coats of latex in there and it's just about set I think so what I'm going to do is when that sets uh, I'm going to mix up some some of the foam and pour it in either half of this and then close it uh, and I've also put a bit of wire in there just to see how it will handle you know when it's you know got a wire armature inside it uh, I've also made sure that there's a, an escape a channel for any excess foam to come out because I've heard that you know the foam can if there's too much foam expanding inside that it, it can crack the plaster which seems you know this is pretty strong plaster so I find it you know difficult to believe that that's going to crack it but I could also it might you know stop it from setting properly you know I don't I don't know but I thought it'd be good to just put a a little channel in there just for any excess to flow out of. So hopefully this works and I'll video after I've poured it in and we'll see how it goes. So uh, let's hope it goes well this time because uh, there's been too many failures up until now. <laughs> so uh, fingers crossed again and uh, I'll see you at the other end. Okay, so this is the mould and I might have put a bit too much in because it is expanding rapidly. Um, thankfully I've managed to put some bags down and yeah, that's expanded a lot more than I thought it would. <laughs> I did, I, I've kind of been cautious about, as I've tested this, I've realised that the less you put in, it seems the more air bubbles you'll get, you know, like, because obviously there's so little and it's trying to expand so much, so, yeah. Right. Okay, uh, the results of that that test that I just did are out of the mould and it's a half failure and a half success. There's still one thing that's completely baffling me why it's happening but I'll show you the results. So as you can see the latex skin has done its job, it's captured a good amount of detail, however the foam behind it, so you can see in there, I don't want to open it in case it goes everywhere, it's just, it's just breaking up, it's, I mean, it, it feels like it's towards the top, it's kind of, 
a bit better, but I mean, it's it doesn't seem to be flowing in all the bits that I want it to. I mean, it's it's definitely covered everywhere, but there's still bits that are quite, you know what I mean? Uh, and there is wire in there as well, but if I go to, there you go, just put it everywhere, uh, like I just said. Uh, but there is wire in there, I think the gauge of wire was a bit too thick and that's why it's maybe not ideal. Um, this is just going to go like this and burst the top as well. Um, so what I've done is I've done another test outside and that is setting just now and hopefully I'm going to leave that much longer this time because it was saying on the back of the demold time was about 10 minutes which it does seem awfully short, but I thought if it's saying 10 minutes, I'll do it. Plus the fact I used half of the normal mix and ratio that they, they had. So like it was 100 parts A to 50 parts B, so I just did half of it. And even then it was still a very strange kind of consistency. So I might just leave that for just a good few hours just see what happens because I've noticed that the, some of the, the leftover bits in the cup were definitely felt a wee bit stronger than what's inside this because this is just it's not what I really want to be honest um, it's just really strange you can see the wire actually in there as well so it's kind of half and half it's to be honest, I, I bought this stuff just as an experiment to see if it would work for animation models and things. And I've seen people using it for animation models. I don't know if it's essentially the same brand or you know, the company that's making it. But this is this is really baffling me. I don't know why it's turning out like this all the time. Um, so. Yeah, I'm gonna wait this out, see what happens, and if it doesn't happen, I think I'm gonna call it a day, because it's not, I mean, I've, well, I say I'll call it a day, but I'll probably use that bottle up until it's finished, because I bought the, uh, the smallest size kit you can buy, so, um, yeah, I don't know where it's gonna go, but, uh, Oh well, um, it might mean that I do have to resort to using silicon, uh, which means spending about 60 quid, and that could go balls up as well, that could be another failure, and I don't want to waste 60 quid, because I've been there before, uh, the other option would be foam latex, which would mean buying an oven and a mixer, so I don't know, I can't see myself doing that, especially just as a, you know, I'm not a professional animator by any means, um, so I'm basically doing this all from home, so I don't think I want to spark out all that money just for stuff I'm doing at home, uh, I'd rather be using that stuff if I do get a, end up getting a job doing this type of stuff, you know, that would be really ideal, but uh, at home it's not ideal having all that uh, money going to waste. So we'll see how it goes with this one. Um, and uh, hopefully this this review will be the last video in this long, uh, this long piece of failure. <laughs> I think that's what I'll call the video, just uh, a failure from start to finish. <laughs> But who knows, who knows where she could go. So, again, as I've done it, this will be the third, fourth time I've done this, but I'll keep my fingers crossed and see how this goes. Um, and I hate using this stuff as well, because even when you're wearing gloves, it somehow manages to get on your skin, and it just try to get off your skin. It's just a pain in the arse, so, yeah. Stay tuned. Uh, the tension is unreal. Okay, so after waiting about, I did say I would wait a couple of hours, but I actually ended up waiting about close to an hour. Uh, so, which isn't, I was kind of lucky, uh, even though I should have maybe waited longer, but 
Uh, what I did do was I took the mould apart, I removed the casting completely and then put it back in and closed the mould again and then left it for like another half hour maybe and uh, the results are actually far far better than before um, so here it is this is what came out of the mould so we've got the outer latex skin and then inside we've got this urethane foam so you can kind of see it in here and it's come out pretty pretty good um, and I don't know why it's it's actually holding together now we, if you saw the last test it was just crumbling to bits um, and that's just a bit that I didn't cut off um, but as you can see from this it's come out really well and uh, even if I squeeze it it's still holding the detail um, obviously there's you know there's little seam lines that need to be addressed but apart from that it's actually come out fantastic um, and here you can see this white section this is actually where the foams come through so you can actually see the foams create this skin as well um, so that's just the comparison although I think for you know just for future I'm definitely going to be sticking to latex for the outer outer skin because it gives a better texture you know this the foams if you look up close you can see it's just you know it's not it's kind of got a rough a roughness to it whereas this is nice and you know it gives the actual illusion of skin which is what you want uh, and I've also got a, a wire uh, armchair and again just a simple one but you can see it's holding the the wire as well. This was a thinner gauge wire because the one I was using before was too thick. Um, but that's not moving around in there because obviously the foam's encased at all. Um, but it's it's really that's uh, a big surprise because you know I thought this was just going to be a a complete and utter failure. But it does work, and I think. I'm gonna maybe try it again. Uh, I've got another model that I'm in the middle of making just now. It's like a humanoid uh, puppet. So I'm thinking I'm, I'll mould that soon and mould it in plaster and then possibly do the same as what I did now. And if I fail it the first time, maybe second time lucky um, because I think what I did this time I'm just I'm only guessing but I think maybe having an air pocket you know because the mold that this was in had a I cut a channel into it so it allowed the excess to escape and this time when it was escaping I was letting it drip in a cup so I wasn't letting it all just build up at the top so I was actually cutting it off as it was coming escaping uh, and also, I made sure to really shake it as it was setting, so it was getting in all the little areas that it didn't get into last time. But it definitely looks really good, the results. And the reason why I'm trying this out is because beforehand, it, it was just like a, as I mentioned, I think, previously, you weren't getting the the look of the original sculpt like the sculpture uh, because it was just a skin you were using that wasn't actually filled um, in the mould so this is making sure that it's getting into every single part of detail you know and it's supporting it so this is basically a, a direct probably a 90% accurate copy of the original sculpture which is what you want um, for example, if I show you this, this was the Triceratops one I made and that was based off of a, an original sculpture that I did, the, the face it was, 
but because this is just a skin that's put over foam, pre-cut foam, not uh, not expanding foam. So this is just like foam you can buy in sheet form. So you're not exactly getting a accurate representation of the sculpture because it's distorted. You're just basically putting this skin over pre-cut foam. Um, so this isn't suitable for stop motion, I don't think. But it's just a comparison with the accurate results you can get. And you know, this could be a a good alternative to using foam latex and silicon. Um, it's definitely a lot cheaper, uh, and you know, the results have just kind of surprised me a bit, and I'm glad they've turned out like this, because if they hadn't, I probably would just resort to going back to that method of just using a skin and pre-cut foam. But there you go. So that's the. The results and hopefully I can use this in the future it's very light as well it's just you know really easy to position and what have you so it's not gonna be a heavy thing when it's done um, but yeah so I hope you found this video useful and um, I have made it for reference just to look back on but um, Hopefully people watching will kind of give them a chance to see what this material is like if they're considering to use it. Um, so there you go. Uh, so look forward to posting more stuff up on here and uh, hopefully you all find it interesting. So until then, cheerio and yeah. <laughs>